طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على سيد الاولين والاخرين سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته and welcome all uh, to this uh, class which is part of our series titled knowing Allah and we know him through his righteous names جزاكم الله خير we know Allah سبحانه وتعالى through his uh, sorry his divine names his uh, his beautiful names, which he commanded us to call him by. And uh, today's name uh, is a great name. And all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names are great. But on that note, um, are, are some of Allah ta'ala's names greater in degree uh, than others? That's a question I'm posing to you all. But I want answers, I don't want silence. Do you think that some of Allah's names are that there is afdaliya or khayriya, that there is that there is uh, that there is a difference in uh, their their rank or in their their greatness? Hmm. You're going to kick yourselves when I answer when I give the answer. Tayyib. The, the answer according to, um, according to the majority of the scholars and the, 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 the preponderant view is that Allah's names, there is, uh, there is the, the, the degree in which they, uh, the, Allah's names uh, vary in the degree of their greatness. And the evidence is that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, uh, when he called Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika al-a'zam alladhi idha su'ilta bihi ajabt wa idha idha du'ita bihi ajabt wa idha su'ilta bihi a'atayt. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh Allah, I ask you by your greater most name, the one which if you are called by, you, um, you answer, and if you are invoked by and you, you are supplicated, with you give meaning that if Allah has the a greatest name then it is the highest in degree meaning that there are names that are lesser in degree and so uh, there is no uh, fault or blame in us saying today we are with a, a great name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names now only Allah knows the uh, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows which of his names are greater than others which of his names are greater than others? And that's why he said, Jalla Jalalu, Walillahi al Asma ul Husna, Faduuhu biha, and to Allah belong the beautiful names, so call him by them. Wadaru Ladina yul Hiduna fi Asma'i, and leave those who uh, deviate from his names. And Il Had, Il Had means deviation, moving away, leaning away. And one of the forms of deviation is to deviate from one name to another. To say this name is better than that name, without any evidence. Tayyib, what do we know? What evidence do we have as to which of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names is greatest or greater? While uh, the scholars uh, and throughout our lessons, those that have been recorded, and in fact the majority, the, the brothers and sisters who are listening to recordings, must know that. We went through all of the names before we started the recordings. And so uh, a lot has been missed out, but uh, it hasn't been omitted from our records. Alhamdulillah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records for us, and that's the most important thing. But before they were recorded on tape or on a USB drive, um, we went through all of the, the, the names up until today's name, Al Muqsit. And we mentioned. Um, sometimes that the scholars would say this is some scholars would say that this name like last week Dhul Jalali Wal Ikram uh, is the is Ismullah Al A'zam but the the majority view and the preponderant view is that Allah's name Allah which is his, which is the proper noun is Ismullah Al A'zam because it is not an attribute Allah's name Allah is uh, uh, is given attributes, is described with his attributes, the adjectives, the awsaf. So uh, Allah's name, yusaf wa la yusaf bihi. 
So we say Allahu Ar-Rahman, Allahu Ar-Rahim, Allahu Al-Malik, Allahu Al-Quddus. Yes, whereas the, the rest of the names are attributes, adjectives, uh, um, grammatically speaking, they're adjectives. Yes, but Allah's name, Allah, is ismu ala min ala dhat al-ilahiyya al-muqaddasa it is Allah's uh, it is a proper noun and so because it's a proper noun and because it is described and does not describe the scholars have said that it is ismu Allah al-a'zam it's Allah's greatest name but that doesn't take away from the greatness of all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names uh, it just means that they uh, vary in their degree of greatness so that's just as a short intro because I, I said we're with a great name today and all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names are great. Allah's name Al-Muqsit. Al-Muqsit. Allah ta'ala he said, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa huwa wal malaikatu wa ulu al-ilmi qa'iman bil qist. La ilaha illa huwa al-aziz al-hakim. Allah has borne witness that indeed there is no God but He. As have the angels and those endowed with knowledge upholding justice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has he upholds justice qa'iman bil qist la ilaha illa huwa al-azizul hakim there is no god but he the almighty the all wise now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name al-muqsit al-muqsit means the ultimately equitable the requiter the most just but we are not talking about his name al-adl so between uh, between uh, iqsat and adl there is uh, overlap but of course because they are two separate names they are not synonymous they are not synonymous so justice or uh, justice um, justice is almost uh, synonymous to equality but equity is different Equity is to give the person, is to give the person uh, the share that they deserve, not to give everybody an equal share. That's justice. Justice is to give everybody an equal share. Um, arguably, of course. In any case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name Al-Muqsit. Al-Muqsit with a ta at the end. So there are variations of Allah's name Al-Muqsit. And it's just like uh, Al-Adl, Allah's name Al-Adl. Adl, uh, Adl has two meanings. It's either to be just or to be oppressive. It is, uh, it, it, um, uh, it's from, um, it, it's from Al-Mushtarak, al It means it has two, op it has two meanings, but th its meanings are opposing. Uh, and Al-Muqsit as well, from its variations, some of its variations are opposing in meaning. So, aqsata uh, means he or aqsatat. Aqsata means he implemented justice. Aqsat means he implemented justice. Qasata means he, be, he became inequitable and implemented injustice. Qasit, not muqsit. Qasit means unjust and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said وَأَمَّا الْقَاسِطُونَ فَكَانُوا لِجَهَنَّمَ حَطَبًا As for the unjust, they are the fuel of the hell. Uh, and مُقْصِط is the one who is fair in his judgment or decision. And قِصْط, if we've heard قِصْط, قِصْط means share or portion uh, or uh, a lot. Tayyib. Uh, Iqsat <coughs> is to Iqsat is to uh, Iqsat is to give people or somebody their share and to be equitable with them, and uh, and cost is to be inequitable and to take a share. Tayyib. I don't want to dwell on these, but here one Hamza, yes makes uh, the world of difference. Tayyib. Al-Muqsit, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala from his names is Al-Muqsit, the one who is fair and equitable in all his decisions and decrees, 
who deals with everyone according to a precise and just system. Al Imam al Shafi'i was in tawaf around the Kaaba and heard somebody make dua and he say, Oh Allah, forgive me and I don't think you will. So the Imam said, Oh you, I have never heard such despair. And he said, You don't know of my crime. And he said, And what is your crime? Or what was your crime? He said, I was part of an army that went to quash a rebellion. And after we succeeded in doing so, the city was uh, the city was uh, the city was open for us for two year, for two days for us to do as we wish. So I entered a home and found a couple and two children. I killed the husband and said to the uh, to the woman, "Give me everything that you have in your home." And so uh, and so she did. And then he killed the he killed the eldest son. And then when he attempted to kill the youngest the younger boy. The wife got in his way and brought out, and brought out a shield uh, that was uh, gold-plated, uh, which, uh, uh, which, he, which he liked. But he saw on it two lines of poetry. And those two lines was, uh, were, إِذَا جَارَ الْأَمِيرُ وَحَاجِبُهُ وَقَاضِ الْأَرْضِ أَسْرَفَ فِي الْقَضَاءِ فَوَيْلٌ ثُمَّ وَيْلٌ ثُمَّ وَيْلٌ لِقَاضِ الْأَرْضِ مِنْ قَاضِ السَّمَاءِ which means if the if the Amir, if the leader oppresses and so too does uh, 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 and so too do his two um, his two guards and the judge on earth and the judge on earth exceeds in his judgment then wailun woe then woe then woe to the judge on earth from the judge in the heavens. And so when he read these two, uh, his, these two lines of poetry, he left the shield and that is what, uh, that's what led him to ask for forgiveness. And he realized the, he realized the, the extent or the, the, the severity of his crime. And so being equitable, uh, being equitable, uh, is a godly trait. It is one of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to abuse your position, not to abuse your privilege, not to abuse your authority, not to abuse your power. Uh, those who abuse their positions and their offices of, of power, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forget. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may give some respite, but, he, uh, uh, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always exacts vengeance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be equitable uh, uh, to, um, to restore the balance, the justice upon which the heavens and the earth were created. When it is, when it is, um, when it's uh, not implemented, then it is rocked at its foundations. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must restore that balance. He restores it either through one of his righteous servants uh, restoring that balance, or he will restore it through the tyrants fighting each other in order to, uh, in order to remove, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove one's oppression with the oppression of another or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways, some of which we'll, we'll mention today as examples, anecdotes, but true stories of course, uh, of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restores that, that balance. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or uh, Abu Mas'ud al-Badri, he, uh, he reports that he was striking his slave with a whip when he heard a voice behind him I'lam Aba Mas'ud. No, O Abu Mas'ud. No, with K N O W. No. Be aware, O Abu Mas'ud. But he says, I didn't recognize the voice uh, because of my intense anger. Uh, 
as he came near to me, I found that it was the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was saying to me, I'lam Aba Mas'ud, I'lam Aba Mas'ud, no, O oh, no, oh, Abu Mas'ud, no, O oh, Abu Mas'ud. And so uh, Abu Mas'ud threw the whip from his hand and then the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to him, I'lam Aba Mas'ud, uh, I'lam Aba Mas'ud, anna Allah aqdaru alayka minka ala hadha al-ghulam. No, O oh, Abu Mas'ud, that Allah is more capable over you than you are over your slave. And so he swore an oath on that day never to be uh, a servant of his again. And in, an, in, and in another narration, he freed him. And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, uh, uh, If you had not done so, then the fire would have snagged you. And so, uh, if your power and your authority and your dominance, uh, uh, they, they cause you uh, or they invite you uh, or make you inclined towards uh, injustice, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more capable over you than you are over the one whom you are oppressing. A man stood before Al-Hajjaj Rahimahullah, and, uh, and Al-Hajjaj uh, uh, had decided to punish him. And so he said, I ask you, أسألك بالذي أنت بين يديه أذل مني بين يديك. Oh, uh, I ask you, by the one whom you are more, uh, uh, whom you are more humble before than I am humble before you. وهو على عقابك أقدر منك على عقابي. Uh, and he is more capable to punish you than you are uh, than you are capable of punishing me and so al-hajjaj uh, so al-hajjaj was alerted by this statement and by this dua and by this appeal and so he let him go and so if you abuse your power if you abuse your power then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then you have warranted allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath and his anger. Uh, as we mentioned, that, that any imbalance uh, rocks the foundations of the heavens and the earth. And so, uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must restore that balance. Now, if justice and equality are intact, then the poor, the poor actually live happy, despite their poverty. Why? Because everybody feels that they have, that they have been given their right, and so even if you are poor, but nobody has oppressed you, then you have nobody to resent. You have nothing to be bitter about. But you could be rich and wronged, and you will, and you will feel a sense of resentment. You will feel, uh, uh, you, you'll, you'll, you'll feel very palpably that sense of injustice even if you are rich because it's not so it's not attached to your material means now as we said justice starts at home to not favor one son over another to not favor one daughter over another to not favor the boys over the girls uh, at work to not favor one staff member over another because in favoring people, in favoring people, that is a form of injustice. Favoring, uh, favoring despite people being equal, despite them being equal in station. And so, for example, um, a, 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 parent cannot, a parent cannot favor one child, one of their children over another by giving one a gift and depriving the others. If they buy one a gift, then they have to buy the rest gifts of an equal value. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that if you have, if you have, uh, if you have a child that's in university and one that's in primary school, and the one in university obviously needs more uh, to maintain uh, to maintain themselves, that you have to be equal because you give according to their need. But when we're talking about we're talking about uh, above what they need when it is a gift. A gift is not something somebody needs. We're not talking about maintenance over here. We're talking about gifts. Then you have to be equal and you have to be fair. 
Of course, there can be an occasion for somebody to, for, for somebody to deserve a gift, uh, graduating from university, getting married. Okay, in the, in, uh, there is a reason for that gift. There is a reason for that gift. And normally, it's not a gift. Uh, it's, a, uh, uh, it, it's still a form of reward. It's a, so for somebody graduating, it's to reward them for their effort. Yes? But a gift that is unprovoked, uh, there is no, there's no, there's no underlying cause for it, other than that they are uh, that they're your children and you're related to them as their parent. Then it's not permissible to favor one over the other. If you do so, then it's injustice. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He He said, "Ya ibadi, inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi wa jaltuhu bainakum haraman fala tadhalamu." O my servants, I have forbidden oppression for myself and I have made it forbidden among you, so do not oppress one another. Uh, Sheikh uh, Muhammad Rati bin Abulsi, he, he relates a story uh, where uh, a passenger in a car, this passenger relates the story to Sheikh Muhammad Rati bin Abulsi. This passenger in the car was with the driver and the driver uh, the driver was um, the driver was on the motorway, and there was a dog that had rested on the on the side of the road, and had its paws stuck out towards the towards the cars. And so, to uh, to show his uh, passenger and his friend how skilled he is as a driver, he uh, he with with uh, uh, with precision managed to run over the dog's paws, but without killing it, and laughed hysterically. Now, the very next week, the driver broke down in the same spot. And, where he, and when he, were, uh, or his, he had a flat uh, tire at the same spot, and he was changing the tire, and, uh, and the jack gave way and fell on both of his hands. And between uh, him, between the accident and him going to the hospital was a, ta was a time long enough for his fingers to start uh, becoming gangrenous. And so the surgeon decided to cut his hands, both his hands from the wrist, to amputate his hands from the wrist. And the passenger who sat with him tells the Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Rati Nabulsi himself, he says, Wallahi, I saw him one week after he, he, he ran over that dog's paws without hands. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al muqsit he's the equitable. Look at the justice over there. Kama tadinu tudan, as you do, it will be done to you. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said uh, 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 that from the, uh, from the wisdoms preserved, uh, preserved from Luqman alayhi salam was, O son of Adam, if you have no shame, do as you wish. For as you do, it will be done to you. And that's somebody who ran over a dog's paws. Imagine cutting off people's hands for not bringing in a harvest that is satisfactory to a colonial ruler. How will their end be? Or how was their end? I, I, I encourage us to look at the, the to, to probably dig, uh, dig a little deep into uh, the private life of the, 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 the king of Belgium who used, to come up, who used to order the cutting off of the hands of farmers for not bringing in a, uh, a satisfactory uh, harvest of, the, of, of rubber in the Congo. Perhaps it's worth looking at that king's end, how he was in his private life, how he died, what his condition was then, in order for us to reflect, in order for us to uh, uh, to contemplate the, uh, the, 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 the end of this tyranny, how tyranny, you know, uh, how tyranny uh, comes back to, comes back to, um, uh, comes back in forms that people could never have imagined as a form of retribution, but from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, now, Imam al-Ghazali, he says about Allah, Allah's name, Al-Muqsid. He says, Al-Muqsid is the one who demands justice for the one who has been wronged from the one who has done wrong. As we saw in these examples. And the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, a woman 
entered the fire, the hellfire, because of a cat which she had tied, which she had confined and imprisoned. She didn't feed it, nor did she let it free to eat from the vermin until it had died a needless death. Until it had died, matat uh, hazlan, needless death. And for that, she was cast into the fire. Imagine those who imprison human beings until they die. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as uh, al muqsit is the one who demands justice for the one who has been wronged from the one who has done wrong. And that justice can be during this life, but the absolute justice is in the, is in the akhirah. Tayyib. Now he says the perfection, the perfection of this, the perfection of qist, of qist, lies in procuring not only the satisfaction of the one wronged, but also the satisfaction of the one who did wrong. How is that? So Imam al-Ghazali, he says, the perfection of Allah's quality of qist is not just to procure justice for the one who was wronged, but to satisfy the one who did the wrong, the one who was, who was unjust themselves. How so? Before we give the example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does he hate the sin or does he hate the sinner? Hmm? He hates the sin. Does Allah hate the oppressor or oppression? Allah hates tyranny and does not hate the tyrant. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not uh, he does not hate the, 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 the he does not hate the those who commit the sin but rather he hates the nature of the sin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he hates the nature of the sin and the evidence is that when a person repents and returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asks for forgiveness ask for forgiveness then he earns Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love meaning what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't look to the person but looked at that person's actions didn't look at the very, the very core of that individual, that he is, he is faulty, he's faulty. So it doesn't matter what he does afterwards, he'll probably, uh, 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 he'll probably go back to that sin again. He'll probably repeat it again, because it's in his nature, it's in her DNA. No, 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 that's not the case. Now, we'll take this example. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now, yeah, so Imam al-Ghazali, he says, that this quality, that this ultimate form of justice and equity to, to, to procure satisfaction for the victim and to procure satisfaction for the culprit. This is something that is not possible for anyone except Allah. An example of this is found in the hadith in which the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hadith reported by Umar radiallahu anh, in which he said, uh, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sat with the companions one day and so he laughed. He smiled and laughed. So he said, Bi abi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah, ma alladhi adhakak? May my father and mother be ransomed, uh, be your ransom, O Messenger of Allah, what, make, what makes you laugh? So he said, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Two men from my ummah fell to their knees before the Lord of power. One of the two said, O oh my Lord, Get vengeance or get revenge for me for the wrong this one did to me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied to him, Make restitution to your brother for the wrong you did to him. So the culprit will say, Oh my Lord, not a single one of my deeds, my good deeds remain. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the supplicant, uh, He said, How will you deal with your brother when not a single one of his good deeds remain? And so the supplicant said, O oh my Lord, let him bear my sins. And so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began to weep. And he said, surely that will be a great day when people will be in need of others to carry their faults for them. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continued, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, uh, said to the uh, said to the one complaining of injustice, lift your eyes and look to the gardens or look to paradise. So the man looked up and said, O Lord, I see cities of silver and palaces of gold, all adorned with pearls. For what believer or martyr does this belong to? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, 
it belongs for the one who pays the price. He asked, O oh Allah, and what is its price? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, you possess the price, you possess it. So he went on to say, O oh Allah, what, in what way do I possess that price? He said, by you forgiving your brother. And so the man immediately says, O oh Allah, I have, O oh, oh my Lord, Ya Rabbi, uh, I have forgiven him. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, take your brother by the hand and lead him into paradise. And so the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa concluded by saying, fear Allah and make peace, uh, make peace among yourselves for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make peace between the believers on the day of resurrection. As we said, this is something that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can accomplish. And the Imam, he concludes by saying, this is the way of claiming and affecting justice, but no one has the power of acting like this except the Lord of Lords, Jalla Jalalu, Al Muqsid. And so that is the perfection of his iqsat, that he seeks to satisfy the victim and also seeks to satisfy the culprit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not stand to benefit by punishing us. In fact, nobody benefits by another being punished. Nobody benefits. Who benefits? The benefit is paradise, but there is no benefit in another being punished. Uh, while a person may, be, may receive satisfaction that, uh, that, their, uh, that their attacker, for example, is, uh, is penalized and is punished, that penalty itself does not come back to benefit the victim. There is no... There is... There is, uh, there is a, a, a mental um, satisfaction, but there is no material satisfaction. And in the Akhirah, and in the Akhirah, people will look to maximizing their rewards. That's it. People want to maximize their rewards. The believer wants to maximize their rewards. And so if we know that the believer wants to maximize their reward in the, in the hereafter, should we not then try to maximize our reward in this life as well? And how many of us hold on to grudges and they're over such petty matters, such petty matters. Again, I, I've told you this before, almost every day people call and to talk about the most trivial matters between them and their siblings, between them and their wives and the woman talking about trivial matters between her and her husband, things that can easily be, over, easily be overlooked, easily. But it requires maturity. It requires us to, uh, it requires a level of compromise, but because we don't live in a time where people want to compromise, people want to demand all of their rights, and once they have everything and they're satisfied, then they'll look to the other and see, what do you deserve? What do you deserve? Instead of starting with, what do I owe others before I start demanding my rights? طيب. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't benefit from punishing anyone. And he said that, may يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ What will Allah do with your, with your punishment? And we don't benefit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why again, some people find it really difficult to accept that Allah doesn't hate the sinners. He doesn't hate the tyrant, the oppressor, the one who committed the genocide. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't hate him for him? Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that they're diseased. Their disease is that they're deviated from Allah. Now the doctor doesn't hate the sick because of their disease. Do they? The doctor doesn't hate, but the doctor, what? The doctor, the, the doctor doesn't fight the, 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 the patient, he fights the disease, fights the, 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 the condition. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without, we don't want to say what concerns Allah, but uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks to the condition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks to the condition. And so when that condition uh, has been removed, has been erased, has been treated, has been remedied, yes, then the person, uh, uh, regardless of what they did before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts them. Why? Because Allah did not look to the person, He looked to His actions. And so those actions have stopped, they've made amends, and now that person is clean and pure. There is no such thing as they were tainted. That's in our estimation, not in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنْ حَكَمْتَ فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْقِسْطِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ And if you judge, then judge between them with equity. Surely Allah loves those who judge equitably. 
we mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't hate those who are unjust. He hates their injustice. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the just. He loves them because of their justice. And so that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's generosity and his bounty. He doesn't hate the sinner because of sin, but he loves the good doer because of his good deed. Uh, the Naam. Uh, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu reports that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Inna rajula la ya'malu wal mar'atu bita'ati allahi sittina sanatan thumma yahduruhuma al mawtu. Naam. Fayudarrani fil wasiyati fatajibu lahuma al nar. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, indeed the man and the woman perform uh, obedient deeds, uh, uh, perform the good deeds and obedience of Allah for 60 years until when death comes unto, uh, unto, uh, unto them both, then they, harm, then they harm their inheritors in the will and so they enter the fire. This is a calamity. Today we see people who pray and fast and go to the mosque. But then, before they die, they say, make sure that the business stays in this boy's hand. And the car stays with, with that boy. And the house stays with this person. And not knowing that when they die, it's not their money anymore. It's Allah's wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآتُهُ مِمَّا لِلَّهِ لِلَّهِ لَذِي آتَاكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributed wealth to himself. And so, why is the division left to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's law of inheritance after we die? Because it's not our money anymore for us to do as we will, as we wish. He said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to uh, bequeath up to a third of our inheritance, but not to an inheritor. Up to a third of our estate, but not to an inheritor. Why? Because it will favor one of our inheritors, one of our heirs over another. And so unless they all consent and say, okay, it's fine. We don't mind that our dad leaves for one of the brothers, one of, one, of our, one of our brothers more, yes, because they need it or whatever. And everybody equates, unless everybody, sorry, consents, then no, you can't. And so to perform righteous deeds your whole life only to undo it all at the, at the end of your life, why? By interfering in what is, uh, uh, in what, uh, in what is uh, uh, a, uh, a preserve of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is indeed uh, is, is indeed the, the definition of foolishness. And we mentioned that the Rasul, uh, we mentioned that we can't give one son over the other. And so Nu'man ibn al-Bashir, he reports that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, قَارِبُوا بَيْنَ أَبْنَائِكُمْ يَعْنِي سَوُّ بَيْنَهُمْ He said, uh, uh, um, make, make your, um, bring your, your children closer to one another, meaning be equitable, be fair and just in your giving to them. Equality and equity, qist, starts at home. The inheritance of a woman is often usurped by her brothers, by her uncles, by even her husband, taken from her. And so today we, sometimes we look at communities, Muslim communities that is, they're poor, they live in rural regions, they're religious, they pray, and they fast, they go to taraweeh, and they build mosques, and they read Quran, and they do Hajj when they can, huh? And then we find that they're the victims of uh, the victims of abuse, victims of tyranny, victims of oppression. And we say, Ya Allah, how? How these people? Now, of course, maybe they are completely innocent, but really, really, when you scratch beneath the surface, look at the level of justice between them. Does the woman inherit? Is the woman given her inheritance? Is the wife given her inheritance after her husband dies? Is the daughter given her inheritance after her father dies? Or, or is the sister given her inheritance after her brother dies? Is the mother given her inheritance after her son dies? Look at the, look, look at the dealings between the people. This is, this is culturally, the woman here, she's fine with that, she's fine. But she's fine with oppression, it doesn't make the oppression right. And so you have warranted Allah's anger. And so to restore that balance, to restore the balance, somebody has come, somebody has come to wrong you. To wrong you. 
Not, not because two wrongs make a right, don't, don't get me wrong, but in order for, for you, uh, uh, for your victim to receive satisfaction by seeing you being wronged by somebody else, by seeing you being, being punished by somebody else. And so this is what's plaguing the Ummah, by the way. What's plaguing the Ummah is the inequality, is the inequity that we see. Starting from the home, if, 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 you, if you could side with your son's victim against your son, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish you on earth. But you, but, but you have to do that. You have to side with the truth. If you side with your daughter-in-law against your son, then Allah will establish you on earth. But if you are with your brother, whether he is wronged or he is wronged, then no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace you with a people who, uh, 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 who are just and equitable. Naam. We're coming towards the end and so I'll conclude very quickly because Asr is in a few minutes. Al-Ghazali, uh, Al-Imam Al-Ghazali, he, he concludes with our share of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name Al-Muqsit. He said, he among men is most amply endowed with a portion of this name. The one who first of all demands justice from himself. That you, that you demand justice from yourself, meaning you fess up when you're wrong. That you, that you uh, uh, apologize for your mistake. That you ask for forgiveness. And not least when you are in a position of authority. A position of power when you are master over the house to say I was wrong forgive me when you are in charge of uh, uh, when you are in charge of a company and your employees all tread on eggshells around you and then you make a mistake no one will dare say that you made the mistake and then you say I made a mistake that is that's the that is the greatest portion of this name Al-Muqsit of al-muqsid, of the equitable, of the equitable. If you are in charge of a country and you make a mistake and you say, I made a mistake, not for months and for a year, uh, dilly-dallying and, 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 uh, uh, and exhausting the English language to find different ways to evade an, uh, responsibility and to people uh, and insult people throughout the process. This is not equity. And with that, with that, the, uh, with that, power is stripped. With that, uh, uh, the harvests are diminished. With that, the rain doesn't fall from the sky. With that, the plants are not pollinated. Oh, what do you think? P you know, states are not rich because of uh, their hard work alone, because of the justice. And so when there is no justice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace you. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace you. And so, by the way, the, uh, well, I'll leave that for today. No. Don't want to say something, get us in trouble. Okay. And then he says, then the one who seeks justice for another from a third party. But then he mentions, uh, we know that one, the, the level degree higher than them all actually is to not demand justice for yourself when you are wronged. Ah. And that takes us back to the hadith in which the man pays the price for that palace of gold lined with pearls in Jannah, that we, can, we don't have to wait. But of course, this degree is so high that it's not expected of anyone. Why? Because we are created to demand our rights and we are allowed to do so. But when you have, uh, when you have ascended to a level so high where you would rather have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward, you would rather seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward and, in, and you are only giving up your own individual right. You can't give up somebody else's right, by the way. It's none, none of your business. Okay? It's not your right to give up somebody else's right. It's your right to give up your right. Then the, that is the most ample share of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. Al-Muqsat. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.